Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com and NOAA Voice and Data Systems. Did you like that little presentation uh, in the microwave? And uh, here is the disc and what it looks like. Get it really close to you. It's completely useless. Another form of degaussing to where you couldn't record anything on there or take anything off there. Now, do I recommend that you destroy your CDs in a microwave? I have no idea if that's going to cause damage to your microwave. So you may want to really consider that you know you got things like standing weight ratio stuff like that that can really damage a transmitter but I thought you would enjoy it just seeing one I don't think I would want to do another one in my microwave it's not a very valuable microwave look at that the thing's just falling apart on me just the stuff's just falling right off it but anyway it's completely um, unusable there's no way you can get any data off that you see it if I get it closer, there's a lot of holes in there. So you can see through it. A lot of holes. It's all chewed up and everything else. Um, there's one other thing you can do too is if you take it and you push it like that, watch what will happen. I don't want to do this with my eyes. See what happens? Look at that. Completely destroyed. And if you could see, it's even coming off. So that's how you completely destroy CD drives. You gotta take interest in these things. Look at it, it's all over the place now. Sorry about that. People have to clean up. Um, you have to take interest in your old data. It may not be useful to you anymore, but you don't know what's on there a lot of times. And it can cause problems. Someone gets a hold of that, they read it, they get your accounts, they hopefully they don't get your passwords and logins, but there's information on these CDs and very easy to destroy. You know, again, all you do is just squeeze them together. And I usually do that inside a trash can. It splatters all over the place in the trash can. And it's easy to destroy them. Um, you know, one of the, the comments uh, from the last video that we did on the destruction of the uh, hard drives, they said uh, they were concerned that the hard drive wasn't completely destroyed. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that. And um, and it, and it wasn't. I mean, you know, if you're an expert on how to recover data off of partially destroyed disks, you could probably recover some data off that disk and all. And I made an emphasis there that that is not something you do to a, a disk if you are uh, got top secret information on it or, or classified information, you're with the government and everything else. Naturally, you want to totally destroy those disks to make them completely um, unusable. When I was in the military uh, in, in um, communication security, we'd get a lot of uh, paperwork that had secret and top secret information on it that we didn't, uh, you know, they were copies or something like that uh, in the, in the um, copier, you know, we'd make extra copies or something that we shouldn't have, whatever. We'd put them into a thing called a burn bag and uh, you'd take that and that bag would be burnt, but then the ashes would be mixed up and everything else, water poured on them and everything else. And there was actually units that actually did nothing but destroy that information and made sure it was destroyed in such a way that no one could read it ever. Um, so uh, you can take it to that limit, and that's up to you. But there's this uh, little thing, it's a time involved in destroying a hard drive and actually turning it into uh, a lump of um, metal, uh, completely melted, takes time, takes effort and everything else. Always like that one comment where the guy said, you know, he uses thermite and he melts the thing down completely. Well, you can do that. That's not a problem. Um, but the time that's spent in getting a hard drive to that point, and you're not dealing with top secret information or secret information or, or, or information that's not overly critical. Remember, that was just to show you how you could destroy a hard drive rather than just throw it out uh, or give it to somebody. Looking back at the last uh, video I did on destroying hard drives and how I drilled through them using a drill and, and then I turned around and smashed them with a hammer, but there was a, a couple comments. Some people said, well, you know, you didn't destroy them enough. People could still read from that. Yeah, that's true. People can still read portions of that hard drive that hadn't been you know, drilled through, and uh, there are experts out there that know how to do that. But generally speaking, if you're talking just to a, a business, a small business, um, that's about all you need. You just don't want some casual person to plug in that 
that hard drive and, and be able to read off it. And so that's a pretty good destruction. 95, 99% of the people out there aren't going to be able to read off that hard drive. Now, of course, if you're in the government, obviously, you already know this, that if that's uh, secret information, top secret information, any type of classified information on that drive, it's going to have to be completely destroyed. And I like that comment on the last video where someone said they used thermite. I thought that was fantastic. Great, use thermite. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you can destroy it other ways. Um, uh, you can put it in a, uh, a super hot oven and maybe melt it. I, I don't know. But the idea is there is what is the value of the information on that hard drive? And it comes down to risk. In fact, when you're dealing with cybersecurity, it's really about risk management. That's all it is. It's really about risk management. And the idea is if you got a $5 bike, you don't put a $10 lock on it. So it's how much risk are you able to accept? Some people just ignore risk completely. They say, well, you know, if I get hacked or people find out the information, that's fine. It's really nothing there that can hurt me and I really don't care about it. That's fine if you accept the risk. Other people say, you know, this information is very valuable and I got to make sure it's destroyed. Well, there's some places uh, that once you drill the hole through and you smash it, you can turn the hard drive in and they will completely destroy that hard drive. And, uh, uh, you know, recycling uh, uh, organizations, they'll even give you a certificate say that hard drive has been completely destroyed. So it's a matter of risk. And uh, the idea is, is you don't put a $10 lock on a $5 bike. The idea is too, you know, you, you buy this car for $1,000 and you have a uh, car alarm that's gonna cost you $3,000 to put on the car to protect a $1,000 car. It's just not worth it. So you have to figure out how much risk are you willing to take? How much risk are you willing to uh, feel comfortable with? Um, and of course, certain companies have policies and you should have a policy on this if you have a company. How, you know, what is your level of risk? Um, and what are you willing to accept? And if it's just drilling holes through uh, hard drives and smashing with a hammer, that's going to suit most businesses, 90% uh, of the businesses out there. Some businesses, no. Uh, you, you're really going to need more than that. Uh, and of course, in government, uh, you're going to need more than that. Remember, if you have personally identifiable information on there, um, you're responsible for that information. And if it gets out, then you're responsible uh, to report that to your state. To report it possibly to uh, HIPAA, HIPAA compliance issues are there if it's if it's medical records, and um, you know a lot of cases you can get fined, especially with HIPAA. It can be in the millions. Uh, there was a uh, doctor one time who was uh, downloading all his uh, patients' records into a hard drive, and then he was taking that hard drive and he was um, taking it home each night. Now that's just one way you can do off-site uh, backups. That's not the way I'd recommend. It needs to be done a little differently. But what happened was they had it in his car and he went out and ate dinner. When he came back, someone smashed the window of the car, took the hard drive that he had there, and he had to report that to, uh, to the Office of Civil Rights under HIPAA. That's a requirement. And he also had to report it uh, to the uh, state of California if I remember right and what happened was HIPAA uh, fined him seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the loss of that um, medical information the loss of the um, uh, the uh, PII it's called uh, personally identifiable information or EFI uh, electronic um, health records um, and it's pretty serious so in that case you want to take extra concern, extra effort in destroying that type of information, and you want documentation that it's completely destroyed. But beyond that, drilling a hole in a hard drive is probably acceptable. If it's just normal business information, you know, memos, things like that, or maybe copies of your, uh, uh, you know, your backup of your hard drive that doesn't have any uh, uh, accounting information, that's all fine. And that's all I've ever done. And when people, my customers turn over their uh, equipment to me, their hard drives over to me that's sitting there in their PCs. Well, that's all I do. But, um, you know, just make it hard for people uh, is acceptable in some locations and some of that. That's enough effort. Remember, the, 
you know, the, the $5 bike is not worth the $10 lock um, because of the value of the bike. So what that information that's on your hard drive or on your CDs or on your thumb drives um, should be at a, a, at a level where you're comfortable with the type of destruction that's taken place. Um, but completely melting a hard drive, yes, that is complete destruction when it turned it into a molten mass. No one is ever going to be able to read that. Uh, do you have to go that far? You're going to have to decide. Uh, another thing you're going to have to think about is how about those thumb drives? Do you allow your employees uh, to use thumb drives? You know, they have a thumb drive. They, they have it at home. Uh, they're downloading all sorts of stuff on it, you know, screensavers, things like that, and then they come in and they plug it into your computer network and your network is down for how long? Uh, so you should have a policy that says no thumb drives, that's my opinion. No thumb drives at all. And um, even on lower level risk, it should be no thumb drives at all. It is really your decision. If you're a business owner, you're going to have to come up with policies and procedures according to uh, this area, data destruction. Uh, what you can tolerate, what risk can you tolerate. And it's all about risk. Again, it's what you believe is acceptable risk for you and for your industry. Hey, thank you for watching my videos. I'm always humbled to see that people actually watch these things. Again, my name is Jim Gibson, and I'm with uh, Nova Voice and Data Systems and also Cablesupply.com and also Blackstone Cybersecurity. And uh, please uh, like us and follow us subscribe there that's the word subscribe i like that to see subscribers you have a great day and i'll see you on the next video hi this is jim with cablesupply.com hi this is jim from cablesupply.com hi this is jim with cablesupply.com and today i'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall this is david signing out you stay classy internet